Hello, my name is Chris. In this episode, I will show you how I kitbashed Lord Discordant. I used the Zombie Dragon from Age of Sigmar kit. What I really like about both kits is that they have similar proportions. It makes the kit bashing process much easier. I will use this mechanical torso of Discordant mount, as well as a lot of bits from Zombie Dragon to provide this organic chaos vibe, similar to what Chaos Space Marine possessed provides to the army. Unnatural. Ok, so I need to cut clean the torso to make the good neck connection. At first I wanted to keep the saddle, but I think that it won't fit. So I am I will get rid of the saddle. Ok, almost there. Now uh, I'm cutting off with side cutters the back part of the model with a little bit of super glue. The base shape is, is ready. I would like to share a trick with you. I made this prototype. It is made on MDF board. It uh, has a lot of resin parts, plastic art, um, some 3D printed parts, a copper wire, a concrete paste from MIG. Everything to make this nice texture of uh, urban urban city. And based on the prototype, I made a silicon mold. What is uh, more most important that the cast is better than original because the resin uh, early on is very uh, plastic and can be bent and cut rather easily. So you can get as much parts as you want and make them with... Okay, so starting with the base, I, I have this big chunk of, of uh, terrain. I frequently use uh, super glue activator in speed up the process with side cutters. Um, I, I try to keep the base uh, to not expand over, you know, to, to make it, to keep the scenic, but not to make the model unplayable. Okay, I have this small part that I put under the foot. Feet. It's easier to make it this way. So with the part of plastic art it will have this good good connection but first I, I need to make some interesting shape of plastic art just be careful with the knife As you see, the side cutters are very important tools. Ok, so now I will just keep adding additional layers of materials to make the base more interesting. I have these 3D printed wires from Epic Basing. Now I start attaching legs. I usually work from major stuff like main body shape to less important stuff like details or secondary hands or legs in this case. Okay, uh, as you see I have these legs uh, up in the middle because I would like to use uh, some kind of terrain to make it crawling over difficult terrain. 
I have this 3D printed pipes from uh, Epic Basing, uh, but I rescale them ar uh, around 200% because Epic Basing makes them very small and I think that they are much more useful while bigger. So I trim the, the pipe. As you see, the connection is almost perfect. With some additional pipes, it makes the scenery much, much more interesting. I will add some additional smaller pipes to provide this additional 3D dimension. It's always good to mix bigger chunk of terrain with smaller ones. Now, now the rider. This is the original rider from the kit. At first I wanted to use Eidalon from Forgeret, but I don't think it is worth the work to, to mix both kits together. So I used the parts from... Um, it's also Forgeret, but it is from the Pretor. The Pretor is also bigger, because it's newer, newer model, and you know the chunkier bigger, so also better scaling with 40k. I have this nice, uh, you know, the, the Emperor's Children style weapon, as well as the cloak and the Praetor helmet. Okay, to finish up the terrain, I, I have this 3D printed um, barrier, but I would like to make it more worn out. Another trick is to use aluminum foil to fill the gaps. It's all because the sculptic materials are much more expensive than the foil. Uh, now there is the time for the gun. Because I changed the position of the rider and the mount itself, I need to re-scarp the position of the, of the gun to I use the same technique that I use for pinning. I have this nice electrical uh, driller. Very convenient tool. The gun almost with the gun ready, now there's a time for the needle gun. Usually this uh, needle thing weapon is inside the um, this cordon mount's uh, mouth, but as I don't want to change the zombie dragon's head, uh, I think that the better part for the needle gun is at the tail. Okay, so as to add additional layer of, uh, of details to the base, I put this uh, summer concrete. This is the concrete from MIG. Uh, nice trick to, to know is that it can be diluted with water, so you can put the thicker layer or you can just mix with water to, um, to make this smoother transition between, uh, between the surface. I really, I really like this product. Okay, so now we have this uh, copper wire. Um, it is very, very good to, to use them as uh, wires for your miniatures. Just the best way to apply them is by uh, rotating them around, rotating around to, to strengthen the bones between them. I drill the holes and put the wires inside the holes. It also makes the transition between mechanical parts of the model and the organic parts of the zombie dragon to more, you know, coherent with, with, the, with, the, with this aesthetic. And who, who don't love the cables in 40k? They are just awesome, especially for like Mechanicum. So we have, the, as, as you see, the, the cables, cables provide additional value for the model. Especially, especially together with the gun. 
I like this connection between the head and the, the body. And especially the tail looked very naked, but with cables it's it's fine. I also wanted to make the some some kind of cells for ammunition or power to provide the, the gun with energy. Here I have the Bistriarium 3D printed models. They are kind of peasants or slaves, and this is the additional thing that I that I put on the base to provide this value together with candles. So to make the whole model more coherent. I am using epoxy sculpt. It's very similar to green stuff, but it's much smoother and it can be diluted with, with water. Uh, unless you want very precise, very small details, this material is much easier to work with, much more convenient. So in 80%, 90% of my sculpting work, I, I am just using epoxy sculpt. But as you see, there is not a lot of sculpting in this model, so if you are not very uh, familiar with, with the sculpting techniques, I think that you can still make great conversion and kin bashing. Okay, so thanks, thanks for watching. In the next episode, Claudia and Nicola will show you how they painted the Emperor's children with this pink and magenta style non-metal metallic colors. I, ho I hope you enjoy this kind of night fighting style Emperor's children with green dark coal colors. You know, pink, magenta, but still uh, kept in the chaos aesthetic. See you later!